Hi, I'm, I'm Greg Sargent. I work at OSO, where we do authorization as a service. Uh, I'm a developer advocate there today, but I spent a lot of my career in DevOps, which I came to by way of systems administration long, long ago. And as a systems administrator, I often found myself kind of feeling like a bit of a cloistered monk. I would be sitting in a data center somewhere, poring over this giant tome that was full of cryptic incantations that were supposed to help me commune with these servers that were all around me. And that was kind of my universe. And so as systems administration began to morph into DevOps, I felt in many ways that I had been sort of released from this cloister and let out into the light. And a lot of that was because of this culture of empathy and of collaboration that I found at the root of DevOps. But I noticed that there were some sort of clouds on the horizon of my idyllic little DevOps valley. And, and that was because you know, as you approach the boundary of, of the engineering organization, things started to change. And whereas within engineering, you know, we would talk to one another as front-end developers or back-end developers or SRE, sysadmin, once we started talking to or about people outside of engineering, we just kind of dumped everyone into this non-technical term. Right? And, and I, I heard this, and I said it all the time. You know, I'd say things like, I need to figure out a way to explain this to a non-technical person. Right? Or I need to do a non-technical post about this. And you know, this, this always kind of struck me as somewhat contrary to the culture that we were trying to develop in DevOps. Right? Suddenly, just by virtue of not being in engineering, your identity wasn't about what you did, but it was about what you didn't do. And this always struck me as a bit of a, of a contradiction. Um, but over time, as I thought about it more, I, I began to regard it actually as, as dangerous. And, and I found it to be dangerous because it, it encourages sort of harmful patterns of thought both in myself and in the people who I'm regarding in, in these terms, right? So you, we hear all the time about how important representation is. And, and there's this understanding now that the way that society reflects me back to myself can influence the way that I see myself. And so if those reflections, if those representations are always negative, you know, an antagonist or a sidekick or just absent, I can develop a tunnel vision and, and start to believe that these are really the only roles that are available to me, that this is the only way that I can participate in society, whether that's the broader society or even just my work society. If those representations instead are positive, then this whole universe opens up to me, and I begin to believe that I can be more than I might have believed in the past. And, and those can be dramatic representations. I can be represented as the hero. But it can be as simple as just being portrayed as a real three-dimensional person right, with motivations and desires. And, and so, as I was thinking about this, I started to decide that like, that was the sort of impact that I wanted to have on, on people as they walked away from me. I didn't want to diminish people. I wanted to help inspire them to, to be all that they could. But I also began to realize over time that this act of representation is, is important to the person doing the representing as well, and that by thinking and speaking of people in this sort of negative way, I was closing myself off. I was closing myself off to opportunities for understanding by deluding myself into thinking that, say, someone in marketing and someone in leadership and someone in finance all had the same interest in my work, which was essentially none, because <laughs> I was saying non-technical. That's not the case at all. But I was also shutting myself off to opportunities for growth. You know, over time, I've had the ability, the chance to be in management positions. I'm currently in a, a marketing position. And these have been tremendously enriching opportunities for me that I would not have accepted in the past when I saw them as non-technical things and I was, a non, or I was a technical person, whatever that means, right? So I found that by thinking in this way, I was diminishing not only the people who I was speaking and thinking of in these terms, but I was also diminishing myself. And so I decided that you know, sort of rather than continuing to kind of take an eraser to a large group of people just by virtue of the fact that they weren't in the engineering organization with me, Instead, what I wanted to do was, was shine a spotlight and really throw the, the unique perspectives and the needs of, of the people who I work with into very sharp relief. And, and by doing this, I found that there have been a couple of really hugely positive developments. The first is obviously by shining a light instead of erasing, I begin to see things a lot more clearly than I did before. And what used to be this sort of undifferentiated mass of non-technical people has revealed itself to be just this vibrant, community of, of people who have really deeply enriched my own life and my own work. Uh, and it's also allowed the people who I work with to know that they're the star of my show. And when I'm working together with someone, that's really what I want. I want you to walk away knowing that I'm in this for you and you know, that I want your values and your goals to be met. 
and I hope that you all also feel the same. Thank you very much.